Now welcoming to the stage, Candace Owens. So nice to be out here. Have a seat. Have a seat. <laughs> so great to be in New York. I was actually born in New York. Nobody knows that little factoid, but born in New York. Candace Owens. Makes sense. Uh, so much that I want to talk to you guys about tonight, so I'm just going to jump right into this. Um, first and foremost, I, they were briefing me on the fact that I, there were a lot of protesters here when Charlie Kirk was here. and which is expected, obviously, we know New York tends to be very left-leaning and they were concerned that there were some people that would disrupt the room. And I just got to thinking about something that I was talking to a friend about last week when I was in Wyoming. I was fishing and doing a little bit of shooting and a little bit of hunting and some hiking and obviously I'm eight and a half months pregnant. <laughs> and yes. So if I'm not crying tonight, nobody will be crying tonight. Save your tears. But he had asked me, you know, you're so active in your pregnancy and you work so much and it's not something that you usually see. And I had answered back to him that the reason for me is that I find it very strange that, you know, people don't think about a couple of generations ago when it wasn't really an option, when people were pregnant and they were working the fields. And, you know, I always reference my grandparents and how hard they always worked when women were giving birth without any medication, just like in their homes, having nine, 10, 11, 12 kids. And now it seems like, you know, everybody in the world has become a little bit more pathetic, right? Everyone's become a little more pathetic. Everyone, left, right, everyone's a little more pathetic. and. I was thinking about this documentary that I was asking him to watch, the person that we were fishing with was hosting us, and it was called, it is called World War II in Color. Has anybody seen that documentary on Netflix? It's incredible. It is actually incredible. Um, I encourage everybody to go pursue it. Again, it's called World War II in Color. And what was really interesting about this documentary was they went back at all the old footage, obviously, from World War II, um, this, and they colorized it which made a huge difference, being able to see this in color, to be able to see this real footage uh, somehow colorized and to see their faces and their expressions. And the first thing that I was struck by in the documentary was that as I was watching it, and I promise you, I am not a crier. I never cry. I should probably cry more. I was boo-hoo crying watching this thing. And what was interesting is that I wasn't just crying for the American soldiers. I was also crying, they did it, did it so well that you were crying for the German soldiers, you were crying for the Japanese soldiers, because you suddenly realized how young they all were, right? And seeing their faces, that they were 18, some of them were lying about their age, they were 17 years old. And when they told the story of the Battle of Midway and this understanding that these 18 year old Americans had, right? So these, these people, they were your age, not going to a college campus, but going to war and they were taking photos, understanding that they were about to get on a plane that didn't have enough fuel to bring them back. So they understood they were dying. They were going to die for their country. And the final conversations that they were having with one another, uh, how much older they looked somehow than the people that I feel like I encounter on college campuses, like we, we, we even look different than we did back then. Um, really seeing the fear once it was colorized, especially looking at the Japanese soldiers because they were on suicide missions. They understood that they were going to die. Well, I want you to think about that, especially if you're a young man today. Understanding that when you walk out of a door or whether you get onto a plane, that you're not coming back. It's, it's incredible to think about the courage that these 18-year-olds had. And then I fast forward and I think about what I do for a living and how strange it is to me that now we are producing students that think that it's an act of bravery who, who just can't deal with having to sit in a room and listen to ideas that they disagree with, right? It's an act of bravery to disrupt. It's an act of bravery to protest. It's an act of bravery to throw a chair through a window. It's not, it's pathetic, okay? Disagree with somebody, you sit down, you listen to what they have to say, you stand up, you raise your hand, you ask questions, because if you're an American today and you are breathing, 
you are a part of a generation of the most privileged human beings that have ever existed on the face of the planet. Thank God for that.